kama uongozi wa UDA kiongozi na chair person wetu gavana Cecil Barile tuko kidembe pia na kiongozi wa wengi katika bunge mheshimiwa Kibani Chungwa na wabunge ambao tutawapatia nafasi ya ongea hapa na maseneta ambao wametumia sio hapa leo tumekuja kwanza kongamana na jamii yetu ambayo inaishi nchi za ugaiguni nchi katika nchi za ugaiguni na inaitwa diaspora na tuko hapa tumewakaribisha sana mnajua jamii hiyo ya diaspora ilisimama kidete na rais wetu bila Samoi Ruto na naibu wake Rigathi Gashagwa wakati wa uchaguzi so leo tumekuja tu kwanza kukongamana nao kusemezana nao na kuangalia ni jinsi gani chama chetu cha UDA kinaenda kuhakikisha kwamba kimetimiza ahadi ambazo uh, tulipeana wakati wa campaign kwa masuala ya diaspora mambo ya passports mambo ya mambo yao ya kurejesha katika nchi uh, yetu ya, ya, ya Kenya na mambo mengine ambayo tumekubaliana na na mengine ambayo tayari yanaanza kufanywa na rais wetu mpendwa um, so tutawapatia pia nafasi wataweza kutuongelesha lakini vile vile tumekuja hapa pia kukashifu yale maandamano ambayo yalifanyika jana yakiongozwa na wale eh, wenzetu wa kule azimio tukipenda kusema kama chama kwamba sisi kama serikali tunafanya yote yawezekanavyo kuhakikisha kwamba tumesaidia nchi hii imerudi mali ilikuwa mwaka wa 2013 lakini tunarejeshwa nyuma na ile maandamano ambayo sio ya amani kuliona jana wakibomboa critical infrastructure ile super highway yetu ile express highway yetu imebomolewa tunasema kwamba Raila Odinga sio lazima upoteze maisha ya vijana wetu sio lazima uharibu mali ya watu wetu ndio uonekane kwamba unaweza ongoza Kenya tafadhali Raila kuna mambo ambayo hayezi badilika na inafaa tuambie ni kweli jambo la kwanza ni lazima ukubali kwamba William Ruto ndio rais 2022 hadi 2032 ndio tukubaliane hiyo kwanza hiyo haiwezi badilika kwa sababu IBC ilishamtambua kama rais wa Kenya so hata ukifanya maandamano kiasi gani usikifiche nyuma ya kuandamana tibei ya unga imepanda bei ya maisha na gharama maisha imepanda dunia nzima these are global problem and therefore upatie rais wetu nafasi aweze panga serikali yake aweze saidia wananchi wa Kenya and therefore tunasema kwamba tunakashifu kilivyo na tunasema hatutazidi kuruhusu mambo haya yaendelee tumekuwa very tolerant tumeweza ongea lakini sasa tumepanga tukasema kwamba ni lazima tusaidie wanabiashara wetu ambao biashara yao inaridhiwa kule Kitengela na nchi yote ni lazima tusaidie wale vijana ambao wanapoteza maisha na tumeweka mikakati ya kutosha kuhakikisha jambo kama hilo ambalo lilifanyika jana halitafanyika tena so eh, chair person wetu ataweza peana official statement ya chama Alafu ile mwalio yataongea tuwe na mtu mmoja kutoka katika nchi za ugaiguni alafu viongozi wetu wote watasema neno angalau waweze kashifu upendo hilo asante very much like Our attention has been drawn by the orgy of violence leading to death and wanton destruction of property resulting from protests called by the Azimio leader Raila Odinga. UDA party condemns in the strongest terms possible their abhorrent acts of violence and the destruction of property perpetrated with the name of protest. We note with concern that unlike before When the well orchestrated violence was witnessed in some predictable parts of the country, the perpetrators of these heinous crimes imported the name to other parts of the country. It concerns us that the protests and acts of hooliganism were well organized and exported to parts of Makueni, Machakos, Nyeri, Kirenyaga, and Kisi 
which have traditionally remained calm, but where violence and death were reported. Overall, the protest resulted in the following. One, nine lives were lost in Lolongo and Kitengena. Two, destruction and looting of Eastmart and Wickmart supermarkets in Kitengela and Lolongo. Three, attack on the Kitengela chief's camp. Four, more than 36 injured and hospitalized. Five, KEPSA has estimated that Kenya is losing, on average, three billion every day of violence out of the violent demonstration. Three, six, deliberate attack on the country's critical infrastructure. Pika Superhighway and Nairobi Expressway. The intention was to close down the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and then blatant looting of businesses within Nairobi CBG. At eight, we saw as neo MPs actually celebrate the destruction and the violence that we witnessed. <laughs> this state of anarchy is not about the cost of living anymore but one person who has refused to accept his election laws. Although the constitution allows Kenyans, every Kenyan to peacefully picket while unarmed, what we have witnessed in the country cannot in any way be described as peaceful protest and picketing. What happened in parts of the country on Wednesday was pure economic sabotage by non-political mercenaries with ulterior motives aimed at reversing the upward economic trajectory that has been driven by the Kenya Kwanza administration. It is sad that as a country, we have allowed Mr. Odinga to run amok by farming violence any time he is defeated in an election. The latest episode of the violence in the guise of protesting the rising cost of living was one of the many evil schemes by the opposition leader and his sponsors to bulldoze his way into government and to ensure that the transformation agenda by, the, by President William Ruto is neutered. As he has been described before, Mr. Odinga has lived up to his re reputation of being the lord of violence by always sponsoring violence while rubbing his hands in glee as people lose their lives. The country must stop treating Mr. Odinga, his sponsors, and the perpetrators of the attack with king's gloves and instead let him bear the full consequences of his murderous acts. What Mr. Odinga and his allies are doing is tantamount to terrorism against the very own people he purports to be fighting. Section 2 of the Prevention of Terrorism Act defines terrorism as unlawful use of violence or threat of use of violence with the intent to advance a political, religious, ideological, or other such cause that includes any unlawful use of violence. It is therefore clear that as neo leaders behind the wanton destruction of property and acts of lawlessness and loss of lives are guilty of terrorism and must be held to account. We ask the government, machinery, law enforcement and judicial officials to take decisive action on those found culpable for these barbaric acts of violence. Thank you very much. Um, I now ask the majority leader of the National Assembly, Honorable Kimani Shoma, to add on the down. Right. Thank you, members of all the states, and maybe just to re-emphasize that indeed, as a party and as a Kenya Panzer coalition, we have indicated that Mr. Odinga is living true to his character and name as the lord of violence and the master of anarchy in this country. So we wish to state that uh, what we have seen and what has been Christian as protests 
picketing and demonstrations over the cost of living have nothing to do with peaceful protests, have nothing to do with peaceful demonstrations, nor picketing. But what we are now witnessing as a country is a campaign of anarchy and economic sabotage that is sponsored by the masters of state capture, who to date are yet to believe that their puppet in the last general elections lost the election. And they now seek a hand in the new Kenya Kwanzaa administration through blackmail, anarchy, and bloodshed. And we should pose the question to them. Both the Lord of Violence, Master of Anarchy, and his sponsors, who are well known, if you purport to be protesting on behalf of the people over the state of the economy and the high cost of living, how do you mitigate that? by sabotaging the same economy. How are you dealing with economic challenges to the ordinary Mwanaichi by stopping that Mwanaichi from going around their day-to-day -day hassles through this, this campaign of economic sabotage and anarchy? How does the destruction of our economic activities witnessed yesterday and the days before deal with the cost of living? It is quite clear that after every election, Mr. Odinga has found it fit to use bloodshed and anarchy to negotiate himself into power. He is now joined by his sponsor, who to date is here to believe, as I say, is not in power, and his puppet never got anywhere close to power. And you can see the hands of the sponsor in the activation and mobilization of Mungiki gangs yesterday. If you speak to residents of Kitangela and Mlolongo, they will tell you there were mobilized gangs of Mungiki. And the sponsor of Mr. Odinga has been a commander of that Mungiki gang for years known by Kenyans. You have seen the leaders of Mungiki standing like armies or like generals in an army behind Mr. Odinga in all his public engagements. And that is why we preach no idly today to tell Mr. Odinga that your campaign of anarchy, your campaign of bloodshed and economic sabotage will not go very far. Kenyans know you, Kenyans know your sponsor, and you must be dealt with decisively. And that is why we have called on our government to deal with Mr. Odinga, his sponsor, and all the other economic supporters with the full force of the law, and nobody should be spared. Not Mr. Odinga, not his sponsor, not the marauding gangs of Mungiki and other goons that they have mobilized, nobody should be spared. Lastly, we have all witnessed the losses that this country suffered yesterday. From young children who had to suffer <coughs> because people are running into schools. To students and young people yesterday who could not make it to their schools. All in the guise, as I said, of peaceful demonstrations. There was nothing peaceful in the demonstrations. Mr. Odinga has no history of ever holding any peaceful demonstration anywhere in this country. Therefore, we want to tell him, since we know you, Mr. Odinga, since we know the intent of your sponsor and we know what campaign you have engaged in, 
spare the Kenyan children from the pain that you are taking them through. We dare ask to Mr. Odinga and his sponsor, how much more bloodshed do you want to see? On the 7th of July last week, six Kenyans lost their lives. Yesterday we hear about seven Kenyans lost their lives. Nine Kenyans. How many more Kenyans do you want to see dead, Mr. Odinga? For you to get what you are looking for, in the name of Anuzo Mkate, or a share in government, or a hand in government, to be able to cover up the massive looting that you supervised, your sponsors carry out in this country in the run up to the last elections. And Kenyans know them. And because they have been asking what is government doing, they want to tell Kenyans to be patient. Government is doing what it ought to do. And neither Mr. Odinga nor his sponsor, nor those who are engaged in state capture and looting of our economy, will use violence, bloodshed, and anarchy to derail government from pursuing them or derail government from reviving the economy that they destroyed. In closing, let me say, Mr. Odinga and Mr. Kenyatta, you know it is you two that got this country to where it is today. Give President William Ruto the time and the space to fix your mess. He has the ability and capacity to fix that mess, and he will. And as Kenya Kwanza leaders, we are here to reaffirm our commitment to ensuring that the country is peaceful and in supporting the current administration to get our economy to where it ought to be. Azina Mangina. Okay, let me welcome uh, Mr. Ireri, who is a representative of the Kenya Kwanza and UDA diaspora team uh, in the US. The tallest member of parliament, I guess, uh, from, from where our chairperson leads the uh, M County. But uh, my residence currently is in Minnesota, and we came as a team uh, from all the states and diaspora to come and first and foremost show some support and uh, be very thankful. Before I start with our protocols, uh, our chairperson, the majority leader, uh, Secretary General, the members of parliament, uh, the senators who are here, as well as all the other leaders and uh, uh, the secretariat of the UDA, and you, the press, we want to thank you for this opportunity to give us and discuss a few things. First and foremost, we came here as a team to thank His uh, Excellency the President and uh, the Kenya Kwanza government. They did promise a lot of things that we've seen that have been delivered. And these things have actually not been told out there uh, to majority of our diasporans. So we, what we see on social media is very different. And we can all attest. Uh, I landed here yesterday at 6.25 a.m. with the plane, half of them were tourists. We were just very few Kenyans. And they're all coming to Kenya. So they know there's something about Kenya and how the government is running. That is uh, that is working, and then apparently, after having light breakfast in the evening, going for dinner, I passed through the same road and I couldn't believe it. Uh, what was going on? So, in as much as we came to say thank you uh, to the president, thank you to the party, what the party has done for us, uh, we first and foremost want to talk about the big elephant in the room, which is him and the man. We strongly condemn as the aspirants, as Kenyans. We strongly condemn what is happening. Uh, we follow in the footsteps of uh, what our chairperson is saying, as well as the majority leader, that one life is too much to lose. One life is too much to lose. And uh, from where we sit, uh, 
As Kenyans, we cannot sit back and see our country banned because of one person or just a few people who are taking our country in the wrong direction. And they don't want to see the progress that has been, uh, been started and going on. And the uh, majority leader, what can even say, the most thing that they fear is where this country is going to be in the next five years, where this country is going to be in the next 10 and 20 years to come under this administration. So we want to first and foremost, before we even talk about anything else from them, that um, one of the things that we have committed to as diaspora is to make sure where we live, we're going to lobby our local government and the governments that's there. Number one, to bring sanctions. I repeat again, to bring sanctions against the people who are operating this man man. We know they do enjoy a lot of... Um, we know they enjoy all the money they take out of this country. They go buy houses where we live. When they come on vacations, they live like kings and queens. Whereas when they come here, they want to hide behind these issues of uh, high standards of, uh, of living. Whereas when they come into the U.S., and wherever they come to visit, they live like kings and queens, right? So we need that money to be brought back to our country, and we're going to ensure that it's done. I do promise that we will use all our resources whenever we have all the power that we have to lobby. We know we have a lot of Kenyans who have gotten into Congress, into Senate, uh, back in the U.S. and other countries. From today, henceforth, we have stated that in as much as we understand what the government is trying to do, and I will be, I will tell you, you guys are very diplomatic. You know, uh, in other countries, this could have been solved by you know, they're funding these things and, and, and they're up there. So for us, we'll go ahead and start that lobby. We do promise we will deliver on that. We'll make sure that uh, all the international countries, all the other countries can see and pinpoint where we are. We've seen our president has been applauded all over the world. It's leading not just Kenya, but Africa itself. He's at the forefront, and we want that to continue, and that uh, how Kenya is built out there. Uh, now coming back to uh, to what brought us here, uh, as I mentioned, we came here as a team, uh, the leadership team from diaspora. We have our UDA and Kenya Consulate leadership uh, that you know we all came here, and the key thing was to thank the presidents because we have seen has delivered on what he promised the diaspora when it came to the plan. One of the key things that we've been fighting for as diaspora is to have a department of diaspora affairs that can deal with our own issues. Because the bureaucracy was too much when we were going through uh, all the government offices. Now we have a PS, uh, Madam Rosalind Jogu, who's one of our own. And we thank that uh, uh, the president for that. We have seen what has come with it. Uh, we just wrapped up mobile services, consular services. Over 3,000 Kenyans were given passports right away. Uh, we also had over 1,112 IDs delivered within a very short period of time. One thing that also even changed, we did see that our kids who were born in a different country were able to go ahead and bypass some of the things that the bureaucracies that were there for them to gain Kenyan ID. And I do promise you one thing we're doing with these kids is to ensure that they know their motherland, they're able to visit here, they're able to start investing here, putting their money here, and Kenya to continue. Uh, on the other side too, we also want to thank the office, um, uh, our chairperson, that you have recognized the diaspora is key part. And no other party has done this uh, where we have been given a director for diaspora affairs. We do thank you very much for that. He is one of our own, uh, he's also a diaspora, and we have seen the work that he has already started doing, uh, that he's doing a wonderful job. We also want to partner up with our party, not just to ensure that it's the biggest party, the most known party, the party that will outlive us, but it's a party that where other countries can come and benchmark about this party. We have seen, uh, as you can see, the leadership of our party is young people. Even the leadership that we have for Kenya Kwanzaa in diaspora is also a majority of them are young people too as well. So we have a vision, we see where our party is going, and we thank His Excellency, uh, the President and the Deputy President, as well as our Chair, for leading us in the right direction. Um, a very small thank you that we did, that we couldn't do much, especially for the party. We decided, as you can all see, we have construction going on. So we decided to first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and just punish the office of the president and the deputy president. Make sure that, uh, thank you. Make sure that
so when he comes here, and when he comes to the, and sits on his desk, he can remember diaspora. And he can see that we worked hard for him, we worked hard for this government, and we are thankful where he's taking this country in the direction that he's taking the country. Uh, the other thing too, just to wrap up on this, is to ensure that we as a party have committed. We will, whatever happens here, up in Yumbani, on the party grassroots, we're also doing it in diaspora. Our members of diaspora, you know they remit a lot of money uh, back to Kenya. And we want to make sure that they feel they're part of this economy. And by doing that, is the party starting, Sisi Wenyeri, charity starts at home. We, whatever we're duplicating here, we want to put it on a bigger platform. So all diaspora, regardless of party affiliation, they feel that this government is working for them. Because they can feel that. Those people who got the passports and IDs were not just Kenya Kwanzaa people. They are all Kenyans. And we'll ensure that the party continues to deliver with that. Uh, with that, we want to thank you very much. You posted us very well. And uh, well, let's keep the work going. And we also thank the, uh, the president. <laughs> Thank you, members of the United States. Thank you, members of the States. My name is Itonga Bukonji. I'm the member of parliament of Manyata Constituents in Lemu. Uh, I'm also the organizing secretary of Kenya Young Parliamentarian Association. And I want to take this opportunity first to congratulate uh, our diaspora uh, people for their warm uh, uh, show of goodwill to the government. And at the same time, I want to actually say congratulations to our police officers because uh, of showing resilience uh, during yesterday uh, planned uh, hooliganism. I also want to say congratulations to our president because he has shown uh, a face of mercy uh, when dealing with this gentleman called Raila Molo I want to say that it is a big shame, and I want to say this as a young parliamentarian, it's a big shame that one of the people who claim to have fought for the second liberation is the one that is leading economic destruction. Yesterday, close to one billion Kenya shillings was lost. And this is the same money that is supposed to go and reduce the cost of living. I don't understand Raila Amolo Odinga for his call to have mandamanos and destruction of property at the same time claiming and telling the government to reduce on the cost of living. That is double standard and it should be called out. At the same time, I want to say that we need to actually take a step at this country that anybody who is involved in issues that involve destruction of this country should not be given a chance to vie for presidency or any other seat ever again. And by that I mean, we have seen people who vied for presidency, including people like Wanjakoya, moving around trying to tell our young people to take bank. It's a big shame and we have to condemn it in the strongest term possible. Thank you very much. I come here as a concerned Kenyan before I even come as a member of parliament. But Raila Odinga is using the youth of this country as canon fodder for pursuit of his own personal uh, selfish political interests. And we are going to call him out and tell him that as a generation, we are not ready to be used 
We are not ready to be uh, martyrs of his selfish political interest. The young people of this country, all that we want is to be engaged in productive sectors. We are not interested uh, in being engaged in uh, destructive activities such as Mandamano that Mayor Dinga is using to blackmail and intimidate the government that we, uh, we voted. I also want to say that Mayor Odinga is not owed or is not owed anything by this country. And it is time he realizes that his time is up. He needs to retire because this is the fifth step for presidency that he has actually lost. He needs to usher in a new generation, not using young people as protesters or as people that he can use as a black belt government and pursue his political interests. It is time that he sees young people as people that can lead this, this country, the productive uh, areas of uh, the development of our nation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, members of the press. My name is Mike Obaro, member of Parliament of Garissa Township. Uh, I want to say this that this country today is dealing with a madman by the name of Naira Kosmoro. The issue is advancing that the, the, the cost of living is not there. Naira's interest is a way to get the government and the state house. And you must understand, and we want to bring him to the, to his attention that that will not happen. The state house is being occupied by a gentleman by the name Honorable William Samoy Reto for the next five years or maybe even 10 years. You also remember that in the last government, after 19, uh, 2017 election, after the handshake, our pre the current president, who was the deputy president, uh, was holding a constitutional office, was technically knocked out of that office by the, this, uh, this group. You must understand, and you must remember that William Ruto did not take up arms, did not uh, resort to violence, did not go to the streets, but he started planning for 2022 elections. What Raila needs to do is to prepare for him himself for 2027 elections, not to bring violence to our country. Again, those who are protesting, claiming that it is their right to protest, must also understand we other Kenyans also have our rights. Their rights to protest stops at where ours begins. Yesterday, we did not go to school. Our kids didn't go to school. That means they are interfering with our rights. We couldn't come to work. They were intimidating us. They were uh, destroying properties that is for public use, which I was uh, supposed to use, but I couldn't use because of the violence they are committed against us. We are asking the police to protect us from these groups who are hired to sponsor my Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Kagombe, member of parliament from the South. I want to tell Raila Odinga, when I the unpleasant sound that Raila is emitting as the hope from one of the meal gathering for another is that little tiny up the sound of, of a lamp. It cannot deter any government from doing its work. And I want to say the love affair between Mr. Odinga and Mr. Odinga is for the for Thespians. We have seen everything that he's doing in this country just for self-aggrandizement. He has used our people. I want to tell you, we are tired now. And at this point, all the evil that have been perpetrated in this country have been done by him. And when I see Mr. Kalonzo and Mata Karua and Raila Odinga, I see Mr. Hiano Ivo, Mrs. Sino Ivo, and Mr. Ivo himself. We are not going to allow this. And this government is going to stand very still. And we're going to deal with you, Mr. Odinga. Hakuna mtu wakuna mtoto kwa mkongo hapa. Tomorrow, come again, we shall now deal with you. We are tired. We are trying to establish your capacity or lack thereof. And we have realized we have no capacity. We shall now deal with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Ewakili Sigais, the head of the College, and uh, we have come here to condemn what we saw yesterday. We come here to affirm the decision that the Kenya president will have a firm government in office, and there is no something that is most likely to come all the country. What we witnessed yesterday is a terrorism. 
and we are asking Raila Odinga and his team that time is up for them to accept the fact that they lost the election and they are in the opposition. They have an important role and if they are able to do it, we will not allow, we will not continue accepting the destruction of property and losing lives of very many innocent tenants. I sit in the bipartisan team that they have taken out and we now understand why they called their members who sat us and had issued if they were unwilling to have a conversation all because their interest has all around me to create chaos in the name of seeking for the interest of Kenyans. Remember, they have not sent anything relevant to the interest of the Kenyans to Parliament. None of their members have advanced a position that will support what they are saying as regards to the interest of the people. And we are saying we are tired as Kenyans, we are tired as leaders, and enough is enough. Mr. Raila and your team, time is up for you to accept the fact that you lost and you have a legitimate government in office that will deal with incidences including that happened yesterday, and there isn't any hardship available to your team. I thank you all. that we have seen across the country. Since the, the Azimio One Kenya land, Uhuru and Raila uh, non-peaceful demonstration, because there is no day Raila or Dika has done peaceful demonstration, we have documented each and every death, each and every destruction, and in fullness of time we are writing to ICC to ensure because Mr. Odinga and Mr. Kenyatta are countries and perpetrators that are good customers of ICC. Number two, I want to assure Mr. Odinga that whether he wakes up in the morning, demonstrate each and every day, there is no room to bulldoze himself into government, either through hardship, either through arrangement or consultation. So that is a whole story. The elections were done, and it is done and done. Finally, is uh, as they plan, because I have heard through rumors that they are all through some of their people that they are planning Mandaman from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We are also planning to do a peaceful city at current where Mr. Raila Odinga stays, at Mudaida, where Uhuru Kenyatta stays, and across their farms in the country peacefully. And ask them, <laughs> ask, and ask them why are they destroying our lives? Why are they killing us? Why are they stealing from us? Why are they maiming and raping our women? That would be our message, peacefully sitting in. And I want to ask them to prepare a lot of chai and mandazi. We'll come uh, and as we take tea and mandazi, we shall be consulted with them. So they are prepare from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all their homes across the country. We'll be peacefully sitting in and ensure that uh, we communicate our message. And, and we'll come in peace. But Mr. Raila Odinga, finally, elections were done and that's it. My only thing I can tell you, there's a song that says, Enda Uskevi Baya Kuko Kweni. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Kwaani The deaths, the destruction we saw yesterday is clear that one Raila Mozodinka has nothing to do with no agenda for this kind of thing. And I want to ask our president that time is enough, that it's time for him to as even the life of Jesus Christ. It is time to do with Raila Square. There is nothing much to be scared of more than what we did yesterday. Destructions of property and loss of life for all over the country every time. There's nothing to do with that. It is time to address this person once and for all. If there are people who think that they can scare this Kenya, let them listen. We are ready as the Kenya government, the government to stand by the rights of the people as part of the constitution. And remember, it's a legit government, it was voted by the people of Kenya, and it was approved by the Supreme Court of Kenya. Lastly, I want to call upon all the other leaders. One, the governor of Kisumu, who by yesterday evening did some things and circulated victimizing communities with an intention of creating an animosity among the communities who lay by the other. We want those Kenyans to uphold peace and calmness, even as the nation is fearing to address the issues that we are facing, which are extra challenges beyond even the boundaries of Kenya. We want to ask that we need to uphold our peace. Let's stay together. Let us not fall in the snare of these people who they told us even before election that they have intention to bring harmony. And I want to confirm, even for those proponents of ICC, it is now high time for them to establish the fact that the proponents 
and the perpetrators of atrocities that was brought in 207 are now here. One, Uru Kenyatta and Laila Moro Kinka. Those are the assistants that they need to transfer them. They don't need much evidence. The fact that are lying in ICC now have come out here that these are the people they cannot leave unless they see their country is in position. And we need to tell them Kenya belongs to all of us. It is not an enterprise of an individual for you to move only when you profit. And when it's not profiting you, you want to go to measures and destruction. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.